Today's video is coming to you from my bunk room at the fire station. And I figured what better place, if I'm not gonna be on the water, to talk to you about safety gear. So this is more of a video for mama, because after me getting lost for 24 hours, coming back from the Bahamas inside the Bermuda Triangle, she's become even more weary of my sea travels, even though this was gonna be inland. Um, so what I wanted to go over is my personal safety equipment. Tortuga itself has all kinds of safety equipment. We've got a four person life raft. We've got an EPIRB mounted to the boat that is a type one that'll all redeploy if we were to sink, roll over. Um, bigger type one life jackets. Also there is instead of just your regular kill switch on board, we have a, uh, it's an MOB plus. It's a wrist worn one. Um, so that way I can still move around the boat and be connected to it. But if I were to fall overboard, the signal disconnects, the motor shuts off, and the idea is that hopefully I'll be able to swim myself back to the boat and get on board and restart and continue on. But I also wanna be safe myself and for my crew. So we've got a couple of A33 offshore auto manual uh, life jacks from West Marine. Uh, I'm looking around at different ones. When I went to the store, you know, it's online found all kinds of stuff, found all, some great reviews out there, That, but I still wanted to go and try one out because if it's not gonna be comfortable, I'm probably not gonna wear it. So what I wanted to do was actually go to a place for us down here, it was West Marine, try them out, walk around the store and feel what was gonna be the best for me. So looking at the different ones, I knew I wanted more of an offshore type, um, including for when I can run in the Great Lakes or if I were to run outside the intercoastal um, and go up the Atlantic on a nice day or something. So bigger water, bigger life jackets. So what I've got here after trying them on and it's, I was getting some weird looks by the, the people, uh, the employees at the store, cause I would try them on, I'd walk around the store. I'd even go to over where like the seats were and I'd sit down in them and see what was going on because if I can't sit on the boat with it, I didn't really want to wear it. Some of them had metal D rings and things like that. Uh, buckles, they would clink around. I was like, I, I like the metal, but um, I wanted something I'd be really comfortable in. So I came upon this one, the, the A33. I found out it's got these reinforced webbing D-rings, I guess you can call them. So if I needed to, I can still clip a lifeline into it to help me stay on the boat. Um, it's got a zipper instead of a buckle. I was a little apprehensive about going with a zippered style um, as opposed to a buckle. It does kind of bring everything more inside but you know wondered about the zipper going down in all the boating i've just done um, getting hours on the motor hasn't come down once um, so even if there were if there were to be some kind of issue i could always take and put a carabiner on this and they'd hold it together nice thick webbing comes on the back um, comfort around here like it says auto and manual deflate this is the manual def or manual inflate. Um, well, why not? Why not test them out, right? Pretty big life jacket. Ooh, it's really cold from the CO2. Um, so you can see the auto, the manual inflator that I pulled, takes, pops the uh, uh, CO2 cartridge, inflating it. Um, there is also, you could, if you need to, if this deflates on its own, if you didn't want to use your cartridge, you can pull this apart, open everything up, inflate with this. You can also deflate. We'll come back a little bit on the inflation of it because I feel a little bit like uh, Chris Farley and Time Boy right now. So we'll come down a little bit. But I did see there were some upgrades I still wanted to do with the, uh, with this life jacket and it was adding more safety gear to it. Um, Cause again, I wanted something that I could wear for the majority of my trip, be nice and comfortable, whether I was sitting down in the captain's chair up top in the, uh, uh, in the second station. Um, and then it was figuring out where to put equipment. So when I inflated the first time, what I had noticed um, is that there was no reflectivity uh, to it. So, I've got all kinds of boat stuff around the house. So I had a roll 
uh, retro reflective tape. So I went and made three, um, three, I don't know, like ID card size patches. Um, these will be stuck one on each chest and one back here. Um, this one is actually mine back here. It's, I already have it set up. Um, they also make, this is an LED strobe. Um, so it kind of has strobish made by ECR. These are great. This black clip right here is actually made to clip on your tube. So once we're to inflate, um, this one is water activating also or manual. It's going to be right here blinking off. On the other side of it, it even has a holder for your whistle. You know, the more sound, the more light, and things you can make going overboard, the faster rescue should be. So those are things I was adding to the bladder themselves. And while I was looking around at stuff, I found these guys, um, Spinlock Lumons. And what these do is they're a water activated LED light. And you can see how it is illuminating right here on the package on the inflatable. What they do is they go on the bottom of this. So when you're sitting in the water, the water connects the, uh, the two connection points on it, opening or I guess closing the circuit, letting the battery turn on the LEDs, and it actually illuminates these. It, slowly, it blinks these to give you a larger area. So you have the more high intensity strobe going off. You have this to give yourself some light. Um, and then I was like, oh, all right. So I got all this stuff. I thought about trying to get some stuff inside of the actual collar to put it. I wanted a little bit more stuff with that. So I ended up going with a, just say it says waterproof, but we'll say a water resistant-ish type pouch, fanny pack, uh, but it fits right here on the side with the uh, bonnet through the webbing. That's pretty cool. For the different crew members we're gonna have along the way, and myself, we got some, some great loop uh, motor vessel tortuga patches, but I figured I can use this to store more safety equipment. So with that, some of that safety equipment, I decided signal mirrors are always great. Let's see if I can let's see where the lights are at. Here's my room looking around. Oh, I almost got, there we go. There you go, you see the shine of light. So you can do this for in daytime airplanes, vessels to get their attention. It's another great thing because it doesn't, as long as it's sunny, it doesn't run out. A couple of Ken Loom, Loom sticks. Um, yeah, they, they last, I won't say forever, but a long, long time, as long as they don't get cracked. You know, while I fear myself and the crew should always have their, their own knives on them, um, this is actually a line cutter. So you can take this. If you were to get fouled up in something, take it, pull the line off. So all this stuff is going to be either attached to or inside of the, the pouches we're using. One last thing I found that I put in both are, they're like miniature aerial flares. Uh, so instead of, you know, using the 12 gauge guns or the larger parachute ones, these little guys, waterproof, they float, um, they send the rocket up, I think it was 450 feet up into the air, bringing the, uh, the illumination down to do whatever we can to you know, make sure somebody sees us, uh, if we were to go in the water. So here's mine already set up, you see the pouches are here. This one I put my PLB on. So much like the EPIRB, the Emergency Locator Beacon, uh, this is a personal one. Uh, these are great because you can use them hiking, you can go wherever you want, out on the water. Uh, so those are great. One other thing I've added to my kit, and so this will be on, on mine. I bought this after the Bermuda, or not Bermuda, the uh, Bahamas incident. Uh, this Garmin InReach. It's a satellite te text messenger. So it'll hook your phone or you can send messages through this to contacts that you have in there. I think it was 12, it's $12 a month once you buy the unit. And anywhere in the world, you can send a text message or a distress signal. So what ended up saving us in the Bahamas was getting a text message out um, and getting it to the right people. You know, my sister and my brother-in-law were able to start contacting marinas in Bimini, find somebody with a boat and give the location that I texted out to them. So it's like, you know what? All the VHF stuff was is great if you have people around you. Um, we got lucky where we got that one bar and sent it off. So I figured, you know, for $12 a month, I can keep this in my bag and not have those kind of worries again where I can text, hey, boat broke down, 
or in that case, boat caught on fire, send somebody to pick us up. Um, yeah, we need a tow and a lot, the location. So with that, with the, that $12 of their emergency plan, it gets you um, 10 messages a month. So you can go on, but you can set up to one of them for hiking where it, it pings you all along your route so people know where you're at, the elevation, the lat long. I mean, it's a pretty incredible little unit um, that Garmin has. So that's today's video. That's our personal safety equipment that we'll be wearing along the way. I need to now go and put in the recharging kit for this. I'll add on the safety equipment, pack the pouch, and then it'll all be ready for the, uh, for the mate on the trip. What are we at? We've got four more days, four more days, and we are underway. Have a good one.